Hello, everyone, and welcome to A Course in Miracles 365, Awakening to Love. I'm your host, Tomas Garza, and I've got a very special show in store for you today, as always. But before I launch into the next lesson in the workbook for students, which, by the way, is a review lesson, I'll say some more about that in a moment. Before we do that, let me, first of all, extend my thanks to Deb Goldberg for joining me as a guest here on Enlightened World Network. Yesterday, Deb sat down with me on this live stream and talked with all of us about her experiences with A Course in Miracles. So that is yesterday's show with Deb Goldberg. You'll wanna check that out if you missed that. It's a fantastic conversation. And if you're not familiar with Deb, tune in because she has been writing several books. She is a many times over author and has direct experience channeling from Jesus. And as you, as you may know, that is how A Course in Miracles came to be, was a channeled message, series of messages over a course of quite some time from Jesus. And Deb talks about her, her work, her experience with the course. And the highlight that I want to point out is an emphasis on community. Deb has always been studying the course in a group. And as you may know, there are all kinds of workshops. There are all kinds of study groups, both online, in person, dedicated to A Course in Miracles. Why is that so important? Well, you'll want to tune in for Deb's take on that, because it's really a good take. My quick take on that is that minds are joined, and this is God's way. This is the Holy Spirit, Jesus's way, the universe's way, if you prefer, your own guide's way, if you prefer that, of getting us out of our own heads, our own limited sense of self, getting us away from the ego and recognizing that we're not all alone at all. We're not having an isolated experience of suffering and we have love, we have camaraderie, we have support from everyone around us. Why? Because we're not separate at all. There is no separation of any kind, minds are joined. So that is yesterday's live stream with Deb Goldberg. Yeah, you want to tune into that. Now, where can you find it? Well, you can find it here on this Facebook page on Enlightened World Network. It is also available on the network's YouTube channel. So if you don't know about that, I'll invite you to check that out. This live stream streams to Enlightened World Network's YouTube channel every day. It's streaming right now. And this is a place where you can go and look through all of the archive shows. Each show on the network has its own playlist that is searchable right there on YouTube. So that's a beautiful, beautiful resource for you. All right. So as promised, we're launching back into the workbook for students. And before we get into that, I wanna say also that what we're talking about here applies across the board. A Course in Miracles is a presentation of universal spirituality. We are literally talking about principles that apply no matter what your spiritual or religious background is, no matter what you're practicing or not practicing right now, you can tune in to this live stream, and I hope that you do that, because these lessons are of great value, no matter who you are, what station in life you're in, what stage of life you're in, where you are, what your background is. Spirituality is universal, it's shared, hence the emphasis on community and groups with A Course in Miracles, and other traditions as well, of course. Yeah, there's a lot of power in that. So where we are is we're in lesson 51, if you're following along. And even if you're not, that's fine. We're going to review some really basic, wonderful, universal ideas today. So the course workbook has led us through 50 lessons so far, where we have an individual idea for the day that one then contemplates and practices. This is a self-study curriculum. 
where one takes the idea for the day, practices it, and does one's best to apply this to any situation, especially those that appear to challenge us, that appear to get our dander up, that appear to threaten us in some way. Very, very important that this is applicable in good times as well as not so good times, because as we all know, and I know a lot of us would like not to believe this, but spirituality is not rainbows and unicorns completely. It's not a beautiful stroll on the beach every day. I mean, if you live on the beach, that's fantastic. I've lived on the beach and recently, and it's really quite wonderful. However, spiritual practice brings things up for us to release. That is the point. Therefore, it is not all rainbows and unicorns. It's not all happy, loving, joyous experience. Why? We have identified with the ego, and therefore, we're suffering. That's why. That's why it is important to lean into all of this and bring it all up. Anything that may be appearing in your life that disturbs you in any way is something that's coming up for release. Count on that, count on it. Everything exists, the Course tells us this, it's told us this so far in the first 50 lessons of the workbook. Everything exists for our own best interest. In other words, it's here as the raw material for our awakening to help us wake up, period. That's what it's for. It may take a form that we consider troubling. It may take a form that we consider obnoxious or disturbing or loud or uncomfortable. Welcome it. Welcome it just as you do the joyous moments, the laughter, the hugs, the kisses, the love, the peace. Welcome all of it because it's all here for your best interest. Mine too, everyone's, all right? After every 50 lessons in the workbook, the workbook has us practice a review session. So the review works like this, lesson 51, <clears throat> contains the first five lessons that we covered earlier a couple of months ago here in the workbook when this live stream first started. It's a handy review. And what we do is we sit with each of the five ideas. It presents five ideas a day. And the commentary you'll find if you're reading along either in the actual paper book or online that the commentary is shorter. And I'll be shorter in my description of these because we've each, we've developed, devoted an entire day <clears throat> actually to each and every one of these already. So this is a review. Now there's an introduction to review one and I am going to just point out a couple of parts to this because they're deeply relevant here. The aim of the workbook, the aim of all spirituality is for us to find, and there's really nothing to find because it is who we are, but to uncover, to get into the experience of peace, the peace of God, our true nature, our birthright, who we really and truly are. It's for us to access that and extend it and live it. So when we're in that state of peace, it's a beautiful thing. You may have had glimpses of this. You may have had prolonged experiences of this in your lifetime. And it is entirely possible that you've not really experienced this at all. Wherever you are, you're meant to be here watching this right now. So it doesn't matter what experience you may or may not have had in the past, because each of us is capable of making the decision for love, for God, right now. We're capable of choosing love instead of fear right now. It's all we've got. Now, the goal of these exercises is to have us experience this peace on a constant and consistent basis rather than just sporadically. Now, if sporadically is where you start, that's where I started. It's perfectly fine to start with every now and then. One experience of true peace will change your life completely and you will have more. Why? Because you're guaranteed to seek them after that. 
And if you don't believe it, well, nothing exists until you experience it. So uh, once you experience it, yeah, <laughs> most definitely. We are tempted in the world to wall ourselves off, aren't we? I mean, that's what the ego is, is a walled off false identity that we define and we defend. I mean, we're constantly in the world defining and defending personal territory. So when we practice spirituality, that's a habitual tendency. We tend to apply that to spiritual practice as well. And we tend to categorize the ways and the places in which we can experience the peace of God. In other words, we can only, it's like someone saying, I can only meditate if I'm completely alone late at night or first thing in the morning. I can only apply these ideas when I have no outside influences around me at all. My cell phone is off and my Twitter feed is going off, but I don't know about it. People aren't disturbing me. Everything's peaceful. Everything's wonderful, right? So there's nothing wrong with that. My wife, Cindy, and I have a profoundly important morning routine where we sit quietly first thing in the morning and we have morning coffee and journal and I read. She does, she does too. We both read from A Course in Miracles and uh, we're reading different things. In fact, we're going through the workbook, both of us right now, we're in different places. So we spend that time. Uh, I meditate, she meditates. It's ritual, it's sacred to us, and it is something that we do, period, end of discussion, unless we've got to catch a flight in the early morning, which hasn't happened much in the past year. So this is about as solid an item in our daily schedules as we could ever have. Now, you may have something like that. That's not the only place to experience peace. The goal, and the workbook tells us this, is to be able to access that peace at all times when we're interacting with people in the world, when they annoy us, not if, but when they annoy us, when they disappoint us, when they frustrate us, when they make us mad. Use another word for make us mad, another phrase, if you want to. This happens, it happens. It might happen to you in 10 minutes. Somebody might get the best of you and you might experience a surge of anger, a fit of rage, maybe even. Can you bring your peace to that environment? That is the goal of all of these workbook exercises is for us to be able to experience the peace of God, no matter where we are, no matter who we're interacting with, no matter what we're doing, whether we're in conversation, whether we're in a meeting, whether we are taking a nap, whatever we're doing at all times to experience that peace. That is what we're working toward. That's what we're working toward. So a question that we can all ask ourselves is how, how well or how often am I able to bring this peace to whatever it is that I do? And to the extent that you're able to do that, that's beautiful. If you're only able to do it one time during a day, that is monumentally better than not doing it at all. And once you begin to experience peace, real peace, not wannabe peace, not something that you hope is peace. I mean, if you aren't sure, then it's not peace. Because once you really experience it, you'll know, you'll just know that it's the real deal and you will know that you're home. You'll know that you're home. Okay, so quickly, let's just review lesson 51. So the five review ideas for today are the first five ideas that we saw here in the workbook for students. Now, if you're following along or looking at past episodes of this live stream, that was back a couple of months ago. So we've been going for slightly over 60 days now. So number one, nothing I see means anything. This is the, the way the workbook has us start off 
right? This is lesson one. Nothing I see means anything. This computer screen does not mean anything. This nose does not mean anything. This shirt does not mean anything. Those masks do not mean anything. The light switches do not mean anything. Right? Nothing I see means anything. Why? Simply, we seem to be seeing a world of complete illusion. You may know this instinctively that what we see with the body's eyes is not our real self. We can leave it at that. And you can certainly go back and practice this idea. Number two, I've given what I see all the meaning that it has for me. Yeah. We look at something, we name it, we assign meaning to it. We call it good, bad, beautiful, ugly, gorgeous, obnoxious. Right? We assign terms and we assign gradations of beauty, don't we? We assign gradations of ugliness and some things we can support, but others we categorically reject. We interpose all kinds of artificial qualifications, levels, strata into our experience. All of it we make up. Lesson three, I do not understand anything I see, right? We understand nothing that we see because what we see is a constant shifting illusion. Now, even if it appears permanent, right? It's still a constant shifting illusion, which includes the physical body. Lesson four, these thoughts do not mean anything. So we begin to apply this to not only what we see, but what we think. Now, what lesson four means, these thoughts do not mean anything, means simply that our real thoughts are the thoughts we think with God. They're not our thoughts about tomorrow's sales meeting. They're not our thoughts about the fact that we need to trim our fingernails or our toenails. You know, they're not my thoughts that are going through my head right now about how I need a haircut. Yes, this is long for me. In case you were wondering, these thoughts do not mean anything why they are not our real thoughts. They are not the thoughts that we think with God. And lastly, number five, I'm never upset for the reason that I think. Okay, interesting, interesting. We see things, they appear to be outside of us and we make them enemies, right? Like I just mentioned a minute ago, we define personal territory and then we defend it. I mean, we really defend it quite vigorously, quite aggressively, like attack dogs sometimes. We really do. And if you think about your own behavior and how you've defined and defended a maybe a, a personal status, something that you've clung to, you'll know what I'm talking about here. We make things that appear to be outside of us our enemies, and they seem to upset us. But that's not the reason that we're really upset. Our, our thought system here in the world has hurt us. It has let us down. It has disappointed us time and again from really beginningless time. And what the workbook is asking us to do is to be willing to let it go, not to let it go right away, but to be willing to let it go. The text of A Course in Miracles talks about a little willingness, just a spark of willingness, just a spark of allowing the Holy Spirit, the universe, God, the energy of the divine to run the show in our lives. Just a little willingness to see something differently, to love, to experience something differently. Just that little willingness is all that's asked of us. So these are the five review ideas. So for the next few days, we'll be reviewing these ideas in much the same fashion as before. So again, as we wrap up the teaching component here, I'll get on and look at the comments here in just a moment for those of you that are joining me live. Know that peace is available right now to you. You have only to choose that. And if you miss this moment, 
If you've missed dozens and dozens of moments today, that's okay. You have another opportunity right now. So choose peace, choose love yet again. All right, so let's see who's joining us here. This is always fun for me to interact with you all on the live stream. Now, if you're catching the replay here, that's absolutely fine as well, because the timing of this show bounces all over the place. As, as you know, I'm, I'm on sometimes at noon Eastern, today it's one Eastern, sometimes it's actually a little bit later in the afternoon. So let's bring us up here on the page and see who's tuning in today. All right. So we've got several people watching live. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. And hello, Cindy. Hi, how are you, Robert? And that looks like Abla. Thank you for, for tuning in here today. Yes. And uh, hello to everybody. Yeah, peace and love is here with all of us right now. Beautiful. Isn't that wonderful? Now, sometimes we don't feel like that's really going on, do we? Sometimes it doesn't feel true that peace and love are with us right now because we have a choice moment to moment. We have free will, which means we can choose love or we can choose fear. Now, if we're choosing fear, you can bet that we're going to be upset. We're going to be upset. It, it, things will appear to be messing with us. They'll upset us why we've chosen separation. Choosing love is choosing union. That leads directly to feelings of joy, of camaraderie, of love, happiness, yeah. emotions that we label as positive. And again, those are just labels. What we're after here in all spiritual practice is an experience. It is the experience of your true self. And that is what we're aiming for here today and every day. So thank you all very much for joining me. This has been A Course in Miracles 365, Awakening to Love. And be sure to catch again yesterday's episode with Deb Goldberg. And I will see you back here tomorrow. Thank you for joining me.